All right, cool. All right, and we're going to be right back at this, and we're going to do session two. First thing we're going to kick this off with is the jump over attack. Um, you guys have seen this uh, probably plenty of times and everything like that, but if you guys have ever tried this yourselves and you don't really know exactly how it works and everything, you probably tried this out and then they, they tech and next thing you know, you're at the wall and they're now facing you. It's like, all right, what the hell did I just do? Um, the jump over tech has a couple of different uses if done properly. So if it doesn't really work too well when you're just facing the person just on axis, right? So if you go do this, this is one of Harang's setups to do his jump over tech. However, if I do it, he faces, uh, he faces me right here, right? However, if I'm slightly off axis, based on, actually with Harong, it doesn't matter, but keep this in mind with a lot of characters you're gonna try this with, it's really based off of what way they're tech. Uh, let me first just show the technique real quick. So once again, doesn't work. However, if I sidestep left, boom. Oh wait, okay, <laughs> try that. What the hell? Oh my god, okay, so try this way. This, what way do I have him teching? There it is right there. What way do I have him teching? This is why. So it does matter what I'm wrong. So, if you know they're going to tech left, so I step left, I'm behind them. If they tech right, so I step right, I'm behind them. So what does this mean with, uh, so what does this mean? So a couple of things if you actually do this right. With Harong, sidestep or uh, jump over, he gets, because he gets quick attacks from his back turn, he'll get that. And same thing to the right. Honestly, before it didn't matter, but I guess now that I'm actually doing a little presentation on it, of course, they want to make it matter. So, all right, how can you actually tell that a person's like, all right, well, all right, that's good to know, but how do I know where they're going to tech? For me, it's this way. Um, I haven't came across a lot of people that control where they tech. Quick question for everybody in the room here, yes or no. Do you guys always pay attention to where you're going to be teching, whether up and down? No. No. Not always. Okay. Who the fuck pay attention to that? See, so, it, well, Magna does. I, myself, especially, I don't even do it. What I do is, like, I use one button to tech all the time, that's one. And if you know that, and you know what uh, side your opponent's gonna be playing on, especially online, you can actually strategize around that. So whenever you press one to tech, you are always going to tech upward. So if, you know, Harong, if I tech, if they hit me against the wall where I am right now and I tech, I'm gonna tech left. With uh, uh, Heihachi, he's going to tech down. But on his screen, since he's on uh, player one side, he's going to tech up. See what I'm saying? Because since he's on the left-hand side, he's teching, on his screen he's going up, and um, since he's pressing one, he's going to go down on your screen. Oh, that's a lot of thinking. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it's, it, uh, it, it's it really, generally people mash one to tech. So they're going to tech left. Um, I usually pay attention, like, I'll, I'll do like a regular combo, um, and then I'll see where he texts from there. Okay, he tech downward, all right, well, next time I'm gonna try to pay attention to that, wall split, sidestep left, and now I got a, uh, a sidestep, uh, a, a, a tech, roll tech, if that makes sense. Um, that's basically all there is to it. So one, pay attention to where they like to tech roll. If you start seeing them tech roll different areas, you're really gonna have to make the hard read. But if you're on the left-hand side and you start seeing that they are tech rolling down all the time, you're gonna wanna sidestep left to catch them on the, um, the jump over tech. The second one, if, if let's say if you play a character that's they don't really have that many good back turn options or you don't know of any like good combo you can get, that you can get from it. One of the things you can do is this. Now, uh, this is a cross up, so it can be blocked, but it's really hard to do it. You have to, you have to pay attention to where the camera's going and you have to actually press the right direction. 
So I believe, honestly, I don't know how the computer does because when I tried to do it, I couldn't block it to save my life. So I set the computer to do this, and there it is, that's why. It's actually a legit, like, if you can actually hit behind them, it's a free attack. It's just a basically a super delayed uh, hop kick. So, sides of left, jump over, delay it, and pray you can actually get. Well, that's weird that he's doing that. That's really weird. But that's computer. Oh, you have to really super delay. There it is. So that's the jump over tech. Questions before I go into the next one? Uh, I'm assuming so. Is there like a universal sort of um, set up off, off of that in terms of like, I don't know, like, you know, you have like low wall splats, for example, right? Probably yes. certain moves. Am I supposed to be looking for like a certain type of animation to set up so, that specific tech there? Or is it much. So here's what you're supposed to be. What you want is a regular wall splat. Two, you want enough time to where you can size up somewhere and you cannot use just any regular attack. It has to be something that has to have that gives you good recovery and they are not falling to the ground super fast. So even a uh, a one two one two will work, but however, if I do like a down forward four, I mean that does work. Uh, how about this? That does not work. It has to give you. It has to be somewhat like quick, or at least give good something. Like that. Okay. Even that works. Uh, it really, it's all about going into the lab and testing out to see what works. For a few characters I know, it's there's not many. Haram just happens to have quite a few options. Um, let me see. Does that work? It does work. Oh, how about this? Let's see if that works. That does not. So, it's going into the lab and seeing what your character can get away with. And it has to be a normal wall carry. So you don't want them ending up right there, right where they're about to fall, because the this is actually helpful to some people too. The lower your opponent hits the wall, um, I don't know if you guys realize this about wall combos, but you get two free hits, and on the third hit, your character that uh, your opponent's going to fall to the ground super fast. Um, if you if your opponent hits the wall at a low angle, you only get one hit. And then the second hit is going to make them fall fast. This is why some people try out their normal wall combo and then mess it up. Because they carried them to the wall, they hit at a low angle, and then they got they did two hits and they started falling super fast. Make sense at all? Yeah, no, definitely does. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right, uh, Magda, do you have anything else to add to it? Yes, uh, the characters that have issues with it are big characters. Um, sometimes they might not be able to jump over at all. And then you have characters like Fang, where it's inconsistent. Uh, the bigger, bulkier ones, um, the jump over tech just isn't really going to work too well. And so this is mainly for, we'll say, king type of build and below. At least for the consistency. Uh, for the next topic, we're gonna move on to the one, two, three method. Now, this is my own method. This isn't really anything that's discussed with like top level players or anything. This is, in my experience over the years, in, to in tournaments, in offline, in casual gaming, um, I've just noticed something. And basically, what it is is when you and your opponent are no longer throwing hands and you guys are trying to actually, you know, play solid, space each other out, 
Um, I've noticed that a lot of people have a certain timing. Like they, they, they have a certain amount of patience for before they're like, you know what, I'm gonna go in with an attack. So you're, you'll start to see like players start doing this around here and everything, right? And the one, two, three method, try this out next time you guys are playing online. Count a, a slow count, one, two, three. So whenever you guys are doing this, uh, wait for your opponent, go one, two, three, and then go for like a magic four or some sort of counter hit. Now, this isn't strictly for one, two, and three. This is for you guys to gauge your opponent's timing. Once you actually figure out your opponent's timing, it's really hard for somebody to adjust their timing and then, you know, constantly adjust or just keep it like that new timing like static, right? That that's their brand new timing. You'll notice that they'll that people will change their timing and then they'll go back to the original timing. Uh, one of the ways to get them back to doing that is to kind of like you got to break their mental state a little bit. Getting in your pokes, getting in your block punishes, and as the match goes on, notice that their timing goes right back to it, and then you can go back to your counter hits. Um, it's it, it it's it becomes increasingly frustrating for the opponent that they don't realize what's going on. And I don't know if you guys know this, but you know opponents that actually seem like they're really solid, really good at this game, but as the matches go on and the things aren't going their way, they actually start playing like really predictable. And that's because you know with their mental state and everything like that, once they actually get too frustrated. They are gonna to go to like that one, two, three method. Just count like one, two, three, and there goes that attack. Poke, poke, all right, we're gonna go back. One, two, three, boom, another counter hit, and it's game over. Well, uh, try that out. Next time you guys are in a match with a uh, random or even with each other, try to figure out your opponent's timing. You'll see. Um, the other part of the one, two, three method, before I go on, Mag, do you have anything to add on that? Nope, nothing. Any questions on that before I go on with the the rest of the one two three method? Doesn't seem like it. Seems pretty straightforward. Cool. Uh, the next part I'm gonna go to is I don't know if you guys heard of the experiment uh, Pavlov's dog. Have any of you guys heard of that experiment? Yes, yeah, sir. Yep. For those that have not heard about it, uh, there was a guy who basically every time he rang his bell, you know, he had a little like little like ding 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 ding, ding bell. And every time he did it, he would feed his dog. And so when it was, it was meal time, rang the bell, feed his dog. And it got to the point that every time that he rang the bell, the dog would come and be ready to eat. And he, he tested one time, he wasn't even gonna feed the dog, he rang the bell, the dog came and he's like, all right, cool, it's meal time. So what does that have to do with the one, two, three method? This one, I've seen most of you guys do, and I think you do it subconsciously. You guys don't do it on purpose whatsoever. Um, it's one of those things where you'll do like two lows into a mid. Condition, right? And one of the things you can do to add on to that is basically do a sidestep low, sidestep low, and then do another sidestep, and then you're conditioning the opponents like, okay, every time they see that sidestep, they're gonna expect a low. And I've seen plenty of people do this. Two, or I'm sorry, one, two, and then they'll do like a mid, like a hot kick, just to mess them up. Or they'll do like a, a, a certain amount of like one, two, three, or four lows, and it's just conditioned. And then it becomes really frustrating because like, uh, or it becomes interesting. Because once you actually uh, see that you've gotten in somebody's head, the moment you sidestep, you'll see your opponent do this. Looking for that low. You know, they start, you know, just, they start going haywire. And I've, I've tried to even get some of you guys, I've noticed that it's like, uh, it's it's all about the condition. And that's how I can frustrate somebody is like, all right, I see the sidestep, what do I do? And then I'll maybe run up, do a sidestep and do that, or this, or a sidestep down for it too. Have you guys come across that before? Uh, yeah, definitely. I do that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, see? So some people do it on purpose, some people, do it without even thinking. But that's another thing you guys should try it next time you guys are in a match. You know, get try that little part of the one, two, three method. That's a one, that's a two, and then sidestep. Make sure you add that sidestep in. You're basically telegraphing it. It's like, all right, hey, a, a low might be coming. 
And I would challenge you guys to don't do a quick sidestep into a low. Do a, a nice uh, delayed sidestep and then do it. And basically kind of like, hey, guess what I'm about to do. And if you really want to see somebody get uh, frustrated, do this like three times too. After, after you've shown that you're just going to do like the mid on the third time, do the third low. And you're in somebody's head now. And watch, they will open up. It's little things like that. It's conditioning your opponent, and once the opponent realizes they're being conditioned, they they will open up and they will be like, no, let me get this guy out of this mindset because I don't like it. It's very uncomfortable to me. So that's that's the one, two, three method. Questions, comments, concerns. Stuff right there. Lastly, why do tier lists matter? Now, every time a something like a tier list, especially in this game, is brought up, um, you'll have two sides of everything. You know, is this character top tier or this character's bottom tier? And then you'll have the other side of the argument saying tiers don't matter. You know, look at insert top player, one with this low tier character, so on and so forth. Tiers matter because they provide quite a bit of information to the other player or to the player that's playing. With. What makes a character top tier are their tools, right? But it's a bunch of different categories. If a person is top tier, they probably have good pokes, they have great block punishment, they do good damage in open ground as well as the wall. Uh, their, their movement is good. So Tiers matter so you can actually understand why, what makes a character good or what makes a character bad. In today's gaming, and I know I uh, said in, in, in not Tekken, but in gaming, low tier means that you're going to work harder than everybody else. Good example, uh, for, for let's say Heihachi versus Law. Um, Heihachi, he has to work his ass off a little bit just for a whiff punch. He has to do an electric. Now, doing an electric in practice and everything like that, sure, it's, you know, you can do this all day long. Me, not so much. See, I already, I'm already messing up. There's an electric right there. It's, I've already messed up. I only did that with one out of six times. So, with law, I can just sit here, three plus four, four. And I just launched it. Law has a top tier whiff punishing uh, move, right? His whiff punishment is, to, is, is practically god tier because he can hit somebody from like half sprint. So what else makes a character top tier? Block punishment. Law has 10 frames, 11 frames, 12 frames, 13 frames, this is also 13, 14 frames, and 15 frames. Top tier punishment. Um, jungle damage. He does just fine. 67 damage from a da safe down forward two, which is 15 frames. I would say it's about top tier uh, combo damage. All right, well, why is, uh, what makes Law not God tier then? Well, see, that's where, that's where you guys need to be looking at with the characters. Law is extremely linear. There's only a few moves that's actually gonna catch you on the step. And then his backdash is trash. His Korean backdash? I'm not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. I'm not running from anybody doing this. His lateral movement is not that good. It almost looks like his backdash does more than covers more space. Than yes. Yes. For him to actually uh, to backdash something, it's much better to do a single backdash. And even then, I'm not getting away from anybody. So that means I have to actually play in somebody's face. I have to learn to play in somebody's face and make them afraid to be in my face. So it's not about me running away, it's forcing the opponent to run away. So I can actually be in a nice little comfortable spot just in case they win. Um, and then, let's see. His backdash is not good. Well, and he's linear. That's that's basically Law's weakness. It's, it's a major weakness for Law because I have to play really smart in order to beat my opponent. So that's law. So my advice to you guys is figure out what makes a character top tier, what makes a character low tier. 
you know, some of the uh, some characters are getting away with murder against you guys, and against uh, against me as well. When I used to be uh, um, when I used to be in tournaments, never thought that. Like, what makes? Let's see. Uh, let's go with a Gigas. Gigas is about mid tier. Now, what do you think? Who, who would be a low tier? Oh, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that took me a while. So, Eddie has god tier move, uh, god tier lateral move. Right, his his Korean backdash, he can get in and out of lateral movement, really good. He can't sidestep worth a damn. Although Wasulu would uh, he would argue otherwise, but his sidestep is practically trash. Um, he is linear, super linear. You, Eddie players have been complaining about this character for a long time because they're limited to about like three or four moves in the neutral versus somebody that's actually like, you know, good at like defense. His combo damage, I mean, he has probably one of the best whip punches in the game. This is this is a godlike whip punch. He'll hit from here. Um, not to mention that as well. His whiff punishment's really good. His block punishment is he has this. He has this, and then his turn is practically over. Nobody's really going to be pressing anything. This is his 14 frame. Meh. Others are better, and then 15 frame. Sure. He has good while standing punishment, but the problem is that's a high for his 13 frame. Other than that, he just has while standing 4, and then a 15 frame uh, high. And pray he prays to God that if he blocks out his minus 13, they're standing up and that will hit. Otherwise, that's going to win. So, tier lists matter because it, once again, it gives the player that's playing them and their opponent information on what to look out for and, you know, basically how their characters should, uh, well, I'm not going to say should be played, but it's, it's a good idea to play them a certain way. But, Magna, anything else to add all to it? Uh, no. I'll just, yeah, I think it's best left at that. Cool. Questions, guys. Anything that you guys would uh, would uh, like to know about real, uh, real quick before we end this thing? Power crushes. Is our part up? Is the startup on the armor the same for all armor? It is not. Um, so that's, you gotta go and basically look up your character and some sites will actually show when the actual power crush will begin. Um, some of them start earlier than others, but yeah, it's really just doing the research on your character from there. That's unfortunate. All right. Well, I think know. one more actually, What's up? if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious. Now, this is more like a general question, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, because you mentioned, for example, like like the community seems to place law, right? The general community seems to place law like somewhere like top ten from like okay. discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were talking about law, you were talking about. Um, it's sort of like his linearity and his move set, and yeah. also his inability to really escape pressure um, mm -hmm. without essentially forcing your mind games on someone. All right. So I'm really, I guess the thing that I'm kind of curious about is is um, in other Tekken games, those would be very very major weaknesses, right? If you can't move, you can't sidestep. In right. games that are previous to Tekken Seven, that would that would literally put you in like prototype Jack team, right? Okay. Now, now the fact that like I didn't get the inkling of you like downplaying law at all from your explanation. You're just pointing out like these are very major weaknesses. But how major we how major of a weakness is that in within Tekken Seven that the general community still places a character like that that highly when he can't? Like, so top? so law has a lot of great tools to actually get people off of him. But the thing is though is that in this particular game. There's a lot of things that people, like including myself, have to consider 
uh, such as power crushes, just regular crushing, like a Lee uh, 444 that crushes highs, or somebody that's able to like uh, like Zafina, where they can just like jab and then run away. Um, or Cooney back to yeah, Cooney back to my God that move. Screw all of you, <laughs> Cooney back to this was better in tag two. I'm standing yeah. by that. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't even. No, we are not going to get into that now. Your, your back two is ridiculous. It, uh, dude, but it used to be minus 10. Now it's minus 13, okay? Yeah, okay. but did it track completely? It did. It was yeah, a homie move. Yeah, it's tracks. It yeah, did. Would, uh, or did it really? It was a homie move. Did it power crush? It, 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 it did power crush, but it actually had the bigger range in tag, in tag two. You can go test yeah, it yourself. So it power crushes. That is the ultimate get off of me move. It is. And it wall splats. Yeah. Hey, it wall breaks. Oh my god. Alright, anyway. <laughs> Wait, did you say it wall breaks? Yes, and it screws. Uh, yeah, and it screws. Oh my god. Anyway. I think I can get to at least, at least... I think I can get less to purple with just doing back two and maybe another something like that with her. So the good thing about the good thing about Law, the reason why I didn't downplay him and even though it's like, you know, it is kind of detrimental to him to like not have good movement. His sidestep is really good. His sidewalk is meh, but his side, his, uh, his side step is actually uh, really good. And he has like some really good get off me tools. One, two, three, magic four, down two, three. And Pretty quick. yeah, they're, they're really quick. So it's like, you know, it's one of those things like, yeah, I don't got any uh, good movement, but if you're gonna come at me, you better come at me smart. So, so what, do you, what do you consider then? Cause I know like, I guess where I'm trying to go with this is a lot of people focus on movement. Um, Particularly Korean backdashing, right? There's everyone just so obsessive about yeah, getting their backdash down and whatnot. Um, do you think that given that like, given the sort of um, things that you see in in Tekken Seven with like the reduced movement and everything like that, did, are people kind of looking at the wrong things then, right? Like, like um, could you get away defensively with just utilizing your your crushing moves and your power crushes uh, in in a more Sort of apt manner than just having to be back dashing and, and sidestepping the right optic, you know, all the time. Like, I, I guess that's like there. Everyone sort of was like KBD, learn a sidestep, treating this game like it's still like legacy Tekken when it isn't. Is what I how kind of how I feel about the game. Um, I'm just wondering feel, if that's how you also feel about. It. I feel like you're uh, not you, but like people that say that sort of stuff. Uh, I feel like they're focusing on one type of opponent. Like where they're saying like, oh, you need to have movement, movement this, movement it, it's, it's great. And you know, it's for some people like myself, if I see somebody moving away, that does nothing to me. You know, if, if I see just someone constantly, you know, free and back dashing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move with them. It's like, all right, you know, I'm going to close the space because I'm going to test to see if they're patient and if they're okay with me staying in their bubble. And usually, uh, this is not everybody. This is uh, 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 most people that I see online and everything like that. Once you stay in their bubble, and you're using just offensive movement just to actually be right here. So if they back that back way, you, you dash forward, they come towards you. You know, you're just staying in a particular area. They're gonna want to press a button. That's true. And uh. especially when they're uh, when they're in the wall stage, they're gonna if if, if, if all they do is Korean back dashing, they're putting themselves in the wall. It's like okay, sure, you're doing my job for me. Let's yeah, let's go. I'll, I'll follow you, sure. And then once they get here, then they're like, oh shit. And then they start actually starting to trying to press their way out. I'm like, no, 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 no. Now you get back over there. And so movement is great to have, absolutely. But you have to you have to be really smart with it. And to go onto what you're talking about, can they utilize their power crushes? Yes, but you are going to have to be smart with it. Because if somebody's just sitting there not pre not pressing buttons, and a Kunimitsu throws a back two, and I had I didn't do anything, I'm a I, I'm I'm going to punish him. And I'm going I'm going to punish him the most I can. And you just lost like how much damage? Is this? this is right here. That's about like well, it's about 43 without the count. That's 43 damage you just took trying to get somebody off. Of you. It's okay to press, to be smart with it, throwing out like little down fours or something like that, down four threes. Standing one, standing one is an amazing get off of me tool, get away from me. 
it's super hard to, uh, to whiff punish that. It's, it's not bad to actually try to press your way out just as long as you're smart about it and everything, but play to your opponent. If all they're doing is mashing and stuff like that, yeah, couldn't admit to that too, absolutely. Or somebody else's power crush, if your power crush is decent. I say it could have been to back two because that back two is absolutely amazing. Well, I guess like a character like Oscar, for example, like even just the normal crushing system, like Oscar is considered yeah. to be like a defensive character, but really it's. If you look at like, I guess the thing that, for example, like people, there's a lot of people that would look at that character, and say that she's not very good because she's not particularly strong at, at movement either. So when people hear like defensive character, I, I feel like. There's kind of like the meme of like, oh, back three Oscar, right? And people think that that's just like throwing crap out. Really, like, if you actually think about stuff like that, like, the actual crushing system to me in Tekken 7, I think, is is probably more highlighted in this game than in the other, and probably more important to understand, right? Than in previous yeah. Tekkens, because you're kind of forced in these uh, these situations at range zero more often than in, in like Tekken 5 DR or like Tekken Tech 2 or Tekken 6. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? It's one of those things that it's going to force their opponent to actually, like, all right, uh, I have to actually consider that this Oscar could back three at any moment. And it's it's legit, too. If, if the back three works, it works. There was, there's no, oh, you masher, oh, you scrub, you know, you, you use back three. Well, it worked, didn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, like, um, if you if you develop a strategy to try and press your way out and it works, nobody can say anything against it. If it if it works if it works universally and not just only like scrubs, and if it works universally, perfect. It's great. I mean, hell, I mean, I, I've played plenty of people, especially in here, where they have strategies like, all right, cool, I'm going to use another crushing system, or I'm going to use the power crushing system to basically, you know, get you off of me. And it works. You know, it forces, you know, the other person to play a certain way. And it, that makes them uncomfortable that they have to play a certain way to win now. You know, they don't think that that's actually tech. It. You know, that uh, power crushes and these and this crush system, it's not actually tech. You shouldn't be playing this way. Well, I mean, then play, then, then beat it. If it works, use it. If it stops working, you need to go to a different strategy. Yeah, makes perfect sense to me. I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop right here because I gotta go take care of some stuff. But thanks for joining me, guys. All right, thanks for thanks, buddy. The this. video, man, very cool. <clears throat>